my sister just built this brand new, beautiful home, but there was only one problem. Her dining room table from her previous home did not match this new home at all. It was this older, darker stain. The base of the table was a navy blue color and she didn't like it with the new home at all. So for a housewarming gift, I decided to refinish that table for her. And that's what we're gonna be doing in this video today. I wanna show you guys exactly how I flipped this dining room table and hopefully encourage you guys to do a project like this in the future. I did this for all under $40 and did it in one weekend while I was there visiting my sister. So stay tuned, I'm gonna show you guys the entire process and let's flip this table. First things first, we took the table outside and sanded down the tabletop to the natural wood. This table wasn't a real solid wood table, so I had to be careful not to sand through that thin veneer. I went ahead and sanded with an 80 grit sandpaper first and then went back with 180 grit after. I wanna show you guys in detail how to do the edges so you don't ruin them. I don't have one of those fancy surf prep or whatever they're called sanders where you can just go around the detail and it sands it all nice and clean. But I wanna show you that you don't need that. I just use my same orbital sander and I do a rounding motion on that detailed edge without getting on the top part and ruining that straight edge at the very top. So whenever it's done getting the rounded part sanded down and I need to get right up against that detailed edge at the top, I went ahead and just slowly went across, um, letting the sandpaper bump right up against that edge without actually going on top of the edge and sanding that down. So it looks something like this. But anyways, just wanted to show you guys, if you just take your time and be patient, you can absolutely do this with any type of sanding tool that you have. It just takes a little bit longer. So you don't need all of those fancy tools. Here is what the table looked like after I sanded everything down to that natural wood. My sister picked up some Paint Plus primer from the store in the color Alabaster. This was about $20 or $25. So I went ahead and used my three or four inch foam roller from Home Depot that I always use on furniture painting projects. I rolled on the paint on the bottom of the base of the table first, flipped it over and then painted the rest of it. This color was a lot more pure white than we wanted, but we'll show you how we changed that color a little bit later. So for the top, it was time to figure out what we're gonna do with it. So we knew that she wanted to leave it kind of a natural color, a really light stain. So first I tried out a little sample section in a paint wash. So I'm still pretty new to the whole paint wash technique, but if you're not familiar, Basically, you just water down a white or a cream paint color and wipe it on and then wipe it off um, just like you would a stain. This is how people are getting this natural look because if you just took the natural wood and applied a poly to it, it would brighten up and not stay that natural color. But after doing the paint wash, realize that's way too light. It's not gonna match the chairs or any of the other stains and woods in her house. So I tried a different part where I basically just used a light stain, like a special walnut, over top of that paint wash and then paint washed again over top of that stain. So I thought that looked pretty good. This is her husband bringing out the chair. We compared it to the stain and the paint wash that I chose and it looked pretty good. So I went ahead and stained the entire table in that special walnut stain and then did the white paint wash over top. I will say that doing these types of finishes is just like art or how I imagine art would be. You just keep adding things until you get that right color. And I think I finally found that on this table. So back to that base. So it was a lot more pure white than we thought. So she wanted me to mix this brown color of paint with the white that she bought, just a little bit of that brown and stir it up. And it actually worked way better than I thought it would have. I've never really mixed paints to get a different color but just a drop of that brown paint with the white paint that she picked out, and it made the most perfect creamy white color. So I hate that I can't tell you guys exactly what this color was in case you wanna do a table or a piece of furniture like this, but um, this was inspiring and encouraging for me because I've never really tried mixing paints, but obviously it worked out great in this furniture flip. So I might be trying this later on if I can't just get the right color that I wanted. So mix that paint up. I did another coat of the white paint, now in this creamy white color, 
on the entire base of the table. I didn't bother using the foam roller, I just went ahead and brushed on this coat of white paint. After my sister got home, we looked at the chairs against the table again and realized it's just still a little bit too light. So I went ahead and used a different stain color called Golden Oak and I went ahead and wiped it on there. And now shout out to my sister also. This is her filming me and her fingers were in the shot every single time, which is hilarious because she's a photographer. So I don't know how she did that, but um, shout out Tiffany for putting your hand in front of the shot every time. But anyways, like I said, went ahead and just added that golden oak stain over top of the previous two layers of the special walnut and the other paint wash layers. So finally think I got it to where I wanted it to. Next, I used this polyurethane water-based by Verithane in the color satin or the finish satin. Went ahead and just used my brush, painted all of the trim around the table first, and then painted a good coat all the way across the table. And so anywhere that I could actually reach all the way across the table, I did that from the ends. But then parts near the middle where I couldn't reach all the way across the table, I would do one side for a couple brush strokes and then go around to the other side and finish that off. You want to make sure that you finish um, going the same direction over the wood grain all the way across the table because if you don't, it will get sticky fast and you will make a mess. I went ahead and did another coat of that creamy white color on the base while I waited for the top to dry. Everyone is in and out of the house inspecting her daughter Peyton and uh, it made my day a lot more enjoyable instead of doing this by myself like I normally do when I'm doing a furniture flip at home. So anyways, just kept painting, got the second coat and final coat of that paint, uh, the creamy white, and then I went ahead and used that same polyurethane water-based on the base of the table as well. Next, I used 400 grit sandpaper and a little sanding block to sand in between coats on the tabletop. And so by doing this, I basically am making the tabletop really, really smooth to the touch. And if you do this in between your coats, you're going to get a really professional and smooth feeling finish. And so basically just lightly sanded all of the tabletop and the base of the table with that 400 grit uh, sandpaper and then went ahead and repeated that step with the polycrylic. So I do usually four to five coats on the tabletop because this is gonna get a lot of heavy use. It's gonna have hot items and food and things put on the table. So four to five coats on the top and two to three coats on the base of the table because it doesn't get touched and used as much. If you do this and sand in between coats, I promise you will have a really smooth professional finish. All right, so I just got the last and final clear coat done on the table, and I think that it looks incredible. I can't wait to see what my sister thinks and how it looks in her brand new, beautiful home. I think that this is going to match so much better than that dark stain that it was before, and I'm gonna let her put it in after it dries. I've gotta head back to Nashville. So I wanted to share this video because I think it is really cool that if you're able to learn how to do this stuff, and it's super simple, um, you can actually do this for friends and family, and I kind of did this as a housewarming gift. It only took a couple hours through this weekend while we were visiting, and we were able to get this table completely transformed for less than $40. And so hopefully this video has taught you something. It has inspired you to do a project like this, whether you're flipping or you're doing something for yourself, for your home, or for a family member or friend. I hope that this has taught you something. I think that this table looks great. I'm gonna insert some clips to show you the finished product in her home. Hope you guys have loved this video. If you guys want to see more like this, make sure to like this video, comment down below what you would like to see more of here on our channel at Sasser House, and of course, make sure to subscribe. That helps us out so much, and we will see you guys on the next one. So here is what the table looked like before I refinished it. It was all dark and boring, and I absolutely love the way that it turned out. She sent me these videos of the after. The stain matches her chairs so well. I was so surprised by how good that actually turned out. Matches her floors great too, because it has that light stain with the dark accents in the wood. And then the white and creamy base matched those new chairs, the fabric on them so well. I think that she was very pleased with this. I hope that this was a great housewarming gift for her. 
and her family, and hopefully they'll be able to use this for years and years to come. Thank you guys again for watching. Hope you guys love this video. Make sure to like this video, leave a comment down below, and let us know what you guys want to see next. We will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching Sasser House.